Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hi, and welcome to week three, uh, lecture six of dynamic atomic force microscopy methods. Uh, we've been focusing this week on beta simulations. Uh, this is going to be the last lecture uh, dedicated to beta simulations. And uh, in the last lecture, we had uh, used VEDA to really try and understand uh, the meaning of phase contrast uh, and had uh, performed um, different kinds of scanning simulations in tapping mode uh, to understand the relationship between uh, phase contrast and local uh, dissipation and uh, local material properties. Uh, in today's uh, uh, brief uh, lecture, we're going to focus on uh, frequency modulation AFM. This is going to be the only uh, effective uh, examples of uh, frequency modulation AFM that we're going to be doing using beta. Uh, so far, we've used uh, amplitude modulation um, uh, approach curves, the basic approach curves. We've used amplitude modulation scanning curves, uh, scanning tool. Uh, we're now today going to look at frequency modulation tools. And there are two tools. There's an approach and retraction tool. And then there's a scanning tool, which again, both these tools work uh, very much in the same way as um, uh, discussed uh, you know, some classes ago. Um, and uh, we will uh, perform two simulations today to just give you an idea of how uh, you would use the frequency modulation scanning tool. Uh, in the first example, uh, we're uh, going to load the um, uh, the uh, frequency modulated uh, approach curve tool and uh, the parameters uses, used for the simulation are given in the appendix here. Um, and it, we're going to approach this on a silicon surface. Uh, now, the tip sample interaction model used for this simulation is going to be the Morse potential. Um, this is a potential that is uh, sometimes used to understand uh, operation in vacuum conditions when you have really clean surfaces and we're able to operate at very high Q factors. Uh, the interaction forces become very, very small and uh, these kind of inter interatomic potentials uh, start becoming more um, uh, applicable to understand uh, the tip sample forces uh, under these conditions. Uh, so again, all the details of what parameters are used for the simulation are shown uh, in the appendix. And what we're going to do is to uh, approach the sample. Um, and uh, remember, in frequency modulation AFM, just to remind you of how this is going to work, um, we're going to approach the sample with two feedback loops on. One is the phase lock loop, which uh, changes the drive frequency. Uh, in a manner that the phase lag remains fixed at the value of uh, uh, 90 degrees as you approach the sample. Um, the second feedback loop that's active is uh, that the, um, uh, the drive or the excitation force uh, changes to keep the uh, amplitude constant as you approach the sample. So both, both of these are active together. Um, so with with these conditions, if we go ahead and uh, approach the sample, uh, it's uh, we have to. One of the first things you have to do when you do an, a simulation of frequency modulated AFM is to make sure that your controllers are working properly. Uh, unlike amplitude modulation, uh, when you approach the sample in amplitude modulation, you don't have any feedback controllers on. In frequency modulation, even for approaching the sample, you have two uh, feedback controllers turned on. So it's very important to check to see that uh, your uh, your uh, control your feedback control parameters are actually uh, stable and are giving you the appropriate results. So the first controller you probably want to check is the amplitude controller, which changes the drive uh, excitation to keep the tip amplitude constant as you approach the sample. And so if you choose to plot the result uh, in plotting amplitude uh, versus uh, z, or you can also plot it as a function of closest approach distance. What you find is the amplitude basically is fluctuating a little bit up and down, but if you look at the extent of fluctuation, it's uh, less than uh, you know a tenth of uh, um, a percent of change in amplitude as you approach a sample. So this tells you that the controller is doing really, really well um, uh, for this simulation. Uh, the second controller that's being used is the phase lock loop. So what you do want to check here is that the phase remains constant as you approach a sample. And indeed, if you choose to, from the results window, to plot the phase lag as a function of uh, closest approach distance, 
um, you actually find that uh, the phase remains very close to 90 degrees. Uh, the very smallest gaps, it starts decreasing a little, but even that decrease is really very small. Um, so one can conclude from this that the phase, uh, phase, uh, phase lock loop is also performing pretty well. So with these two in place, uh, the, uh, the, the, the signals that really tell us about the local material properties are going to be uh, the frequency shift and the excitation signal. So usually people are more interested in the excitation frequency as a function of uh, minimum uh, uh, distance of approach um, because it's closely related to the conservative tip sample interaction potential. So it's often plotted, as is done in this case, in terms of relative frequency shift, relative to the natural frequency far from a sample. And you see that as you approach a sample, uh, you know, the frequency first shifts, becomes negative of what it was. It shifts down and then it shifts back up as it encounters repulsive interaction uh, forces. And again, you can do a drop-down menu and look at how the drive amplitude changes as a function of uh, Z distance or minimum approach distance. Uh, the one thing I want to uh, emphasize before talking about uh, problem two is frequency modulation, one of the biggest challenges in doing simulations in FM, AFM is the fact that you have so many uh, feedback control parameters to choose from. So uh, there are three main controllers when you do scanning uh, FM, AFM, and the next example is about scanning AFM. Uh, scanning FM, AFM. Uh, one is going to be uh, the ZP as a controller that changes the Z uh, in order to keep the frequency shift constant. Uh, then you have the frequency, the phase lock loop, uh, which also has a uh, feedback gain associated with it uh, in order to keep the phase uh, fixed at a certain value. And then the third, uh, you actually have um, an amplitude uh, controller that changes the excitation to keep the amplitude constant. Uh, these are three nested controllers and uh, it very quickly becomes very complicated to try and figure out what ranges of parameters uh, that will give you a stable image. Uh, so as a result, uh, in the VEDA simulation tool for scanning, we actually have the option of auto-calculating the gains. And those auto-calculated gains are likely to give you, they're not guaranteed, but they're likely to give you stable operating conditions uh, for the um, uh, typical parameters that are chosen uh, for this experiment or for this numerical experiment. So I do encourage you, if you if you don't have a feel for what numbers to put in here right now, uh, to choose to do auto calculate uh, these quantities. Um, so that said, we move on to problem two, which is a frequency modulated scanning uh, uh, operation. So here, uh, the intent is to use FM, AFM to scan a flat substrate where there is a uh, feature uh, that's protruding from the sample. Again, all the details of the simulation are shown in the appendix. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 once you input all the parameters that are given in the, um, uh, in the appendix, uh, you'll be able to simulate what happens and you'll be able to change um, operating conditions one at a time to understand how those will actually influence the image. What I want to emphasize here is that unlike the previous simulation, the tip sample interaction model um, is going to be the DMT interaction model and we're for the moment not going to have a different uh, property uh, assigned to the feature compared to the sample, uh, compared to the substrate. So the substrate and the feature basically have the same tip sample interaction forces. So when one goes through this uh, to measure the topography of the sample, you see that uh, you know the red shows the original topography and the blue uh, is the uh, measured topography. So you really find that the controller, controllers are working well enough to reproduce very closely the, uh, the actual topography. You can also, using the drop-down menu on results, uh, check how the amplitude controller is doing over the scan. And this is the plot of the amplitude, and you find that the amplitude generally tends to remain pretty constant. There are slight fluctuations as uh, the, uh, the probe starts ramping up the feature, and then things kind of smooth out when the probe uh, comes down off the, um, off the top of the feature. Uh, you should also want to check uh, the phase controller to see if it's working well, and you see that the phase is uh, consistently uh, constant as you uh, scan over the sample, uh, suggesting that the frequency shift you measure uh, is in fact related to the uh, changing natural frequency of the oscillating probe. Uh, 
Uh, what's being plotted here is the uh, normalized frequency shift and um, uh, um, remember the Z controller is moving up and down to keep uh, the frequency shift constant. What we find is that there is a slight change in frequency shift. It's a very small change, but it, it does seem to happen uh, when you start climbing up the feature and when you start coming down the feature. Um, you could try to improve on this if you don't, it, it, it act it should be flat. Um, if you do want to improve on it, uh, you can play around with the Z controller uh, settings and try to improve it. So you squeeze this and improve performance out of it. Um, uh, and so, so that, that's, that's one uh, thing that can be done. The other thing you can try to do is when you play around with the Z controller uh, gains, if you change the proportional gain on the Z controller, um, you know, reduce it to 0.06 from 0.03, you find suddenly that you start getting parachuting errors, that when you come off the top of the feature, uh, you can get into situations where it takes a very long time for the controller to settle back down uh, to, um, uh, to, to the steady state um, uh, scanning situation. So this is how one would um, use the frequency modulation scanning tool. Um, you know, I encourage you at first to do the auto calculation uh, of the appropriate gains and change one gain at a time uh, on your own before developing more confidence with what the numbers should be and playing around with more than one operating parameter at a time. So uh, thank you very much and uh, we'll continue uh, in the next week.